استغفره أعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا فيهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين فكيز الله سبحانه وتعالى and he's the only one worthy of praise I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness I believe in him and I trust him <coughs> I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is his sunnah. The words of all affairs is innovation, an addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have the taqwa of Allah. And don't die unless you are in a full, total submission to Almighty Allah and His order. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order us in many places in the Quran وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship your Lord alone and do not associate any partner beside him. We hear about ibadah, worship, but to many Muslims, even Arab, who speak the Arabic language, they think that ibadah means or equal salah, <coughs> especially Jum'ah. Some Muslims, they pray Jum'ah only. And some Muslims, they pray the five-time prayers. And by making the five-time prayers every day, they feel that they already fulfill their duty towards Allah. This because the lack of understanding about ibadah. <coughs> Any matter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned in his book and ordered you to do, when you do it, it is ibadah. Anything that Allah forbid in his book and you stay away from it, this is ibadah. Anything the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended for you to do it and you do it, this is ibadah, this is worship. 
anything the Prophet ﷺ forbade you to do it and you stay away from it, you are making ibadah. So do not let yourself get fooled by ibadah. That mean is a something simple. You can do it in five minutes and you already Amir al Mu'mineen. No, you are not. Ibadah is submit yourself willingly with your own will to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless you like it or you dislike regardless you like it or you dislike it so we need to understand that ibadah is not equal salah is not equal fasting of Ramadan and when Ramadan is over now the mosque is empty why? because Maybe they have the understanding, but they are not acting on their understanding. Ramadan is over, that means Islam is over. Bye-bye, see you Ramadan next year, now I'm back again. <coughs> Busy with the dunya. Statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَادِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ La sharika la. Say my prayer, my sacrifice, my daily life. Listen to this word. Mahyaya. My daily life from 5.30, 5 o'clock when you get up for Fajr, if you get up, until you go to sleep at night, every action, every saying, every movement, in your life during this time it has to be <coughs> according to the book of Allah and the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Otherwise, you fool fooling yourself. And it was not the end of the verse. He said, wa mamati, even my death. I have no control over death. But why do you die? In what case you die? And how you going to be? Form Janazah on yourself. How did you write the wasiyah and the last word testimony? You already made some preparation. So not only your life have to be Islam, your social life, your economic life, even your political life. Even your political life. Some people they think they are free. You are not free. Allah always calling us. Most of the time with the term, Ya Ibadi, oh my slave servant, you are not free. You are not free to, to design life for yourself. Doesn't matter if it's economic life or political life or social life. It's very important for the Muslim to understand that every inch is in your life supposed to be Islamically. With this small introduction, I want to let you know that the year is over. For those who take a nap, they want to wake up and say the Imam is talking about what year over. <coughs> yes, Ramadan is over, the Eid is over, and the Hajj is going to be over soon. But I want to tell you about a new year. Or a year is over. Which one? The school year. <coughs> what school have to do with when khutbah, when jum'ah, yes. I told you Islam goes with you wherever you go. Islam, it goes with you wherever you go. But being not taught Islam properly, you limit Islam. So, what does it mean that Year is over, the school year is over. That means now you have approximately seven, you have two and a half months average. Your children, your children out of the school. You have about six weeks approximately. You have about 700 hours. No 700 hours, but multiplied by 60 and 60, so you know by seconds. So you can understand how important time in your life. 
is very important to such a degree that Allah swear by the time I say wal asr by the token of the time. What does this mean? We still don't understand what you're trying to tell us. I want to talk to you about the amana. The amana, the trust that Allah has put it in your hand. The amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trusts you with it. The children, he and she and they. What Allah is saying in the Quran, He's talking about your family, about your children, about your daughters, about your boys, about your sons, about your wife. Ya ayuha alladheena amanu. Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum. Wa ahlikum. Do you think the ibadah best to come to Friday? Do you think that the ibadah say Allahu Akbar and make salah? Al Quran is telling you about your family. You are responsible, not only feeding them. You have to understand that your children, they are not cattle. Give them food and food and food, and this is it. No. You are being trusted with a man, five kids. Six kids, ten kids, and Allah make you as a fireman. What does this mean, fireman? Saves him. You got to pull this big horse out of the fire truck, and you rush to them because you want to save them. <laughs> so Allah say, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, are you part of them or not? If yes, Allah say, O anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. You fireman, save yourself first, and after this, save the people. You as a husband, you as a leader, you as an imam, you as a director, you are responsible about all those people under your roof. O anfusakum. But the fire of the dunya is nothing compared to the fire of the hereafter. What your children are going to be doing for six weeks, 700 hours, time, what are you going to be doing? TV, Nintendo, TV, Nintendo, running, playing, basketball, what else? And you're dragging! And the mom fighting with them, then you pray, I'm finished only when I finish. I told you I'm watching TV. Let me enjoy the story, the movie. Where? Where is the Muslim Ummah? Where is the Muslim? Not the Muslim Ummah. Where is the seed for the Muslim Ummah? Where is the flowers of the Muslim Ummah? It's a big. Because basically, you leave at 7 or 6 o'clock in the morning, you come at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. All what you know, work, work, work. Money, money, money. But their mother is supposed to be taken care. And you know, the word they coming from you, different coming from the mother. They take advantage of their mother. Do you check on them? You check on them about what they're going to wear for Eid. You check on them what they're going to wear for the winter. You check on them when they cuff them and you rush to the hospital. And Allah is saying, Ku anfusakum. Save yourself, protect yourself and your family. <coughs> Do we care for our children? All this rubbish that they hear and see every day, especially when the school year is over. They're going to be home. Mom, I'm bored, I'm tired. Leave me alone because I'm talking in the phone. And the only thing is what? 
the TV, magazines, because also he and she, each one of them, they have their cell phone. This is what you work hard for. But saving them from hellfire, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Imam, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim, most forgiven, most merciful. Where is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he say, Murk? Not, please, pray, I give you some candy, I give. He say, command your children, Muru awladakum bis salat al alayha li ash. This is not your job. Who's, who's job? You have a child, a human being child is not a baby cow. You are not raising cows in your house. Animals. You you try to raise a human being and not only a human being, you try to raise a human being to be a Muslim human being, to submit to Allah with their time, with their intelligence, with their reading, with their memorization, with everything. A school year is over. What are you going, what kind of program you have for your family, for your children? For eight weeks, for almost three months. There is no <laughs> program, zero program. Mom will take care of them. Allah did not call it the Christian or the Jewish. Allah said, So part of your Iman, you take care of your children. Not only feeding them, but feeding their mind, feeding their soul, feeding their heart. Care for your children. If the child touch by the fire, little bit you rush. You call the ambulance because they care. But when your children sitting on the cell phone, each one of them cell phone, their own private phone, talking, you don't know who they talk with, what they talk about, you don't know. They watching, you don't know what they watching. You don't know anything about it. What do you know about your children? Their names, and you work hard for them as they said. Go and forsakum. Save yourself and your children from hellfire. Listen to the nida of Allah, the call of Allah. Listen to the call of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he cares for us and want us to go to Jannah and also our children to go to Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the responsibility very heavy on our children and he told us, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ Each one of you is a shepherd. Each one of you is a governor, and each one of you going to be questioned about his government. You going to be questioned about your children, about their time, their news, your baby, all them. You going not only about their food and their drink, their mind, their heart, how they think. You have to guide them. Your children is a man is a trust in your hand. O anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Each one of you, doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, male, female, if you are a parent, if you are a parent, you, he or she, you are going to be questioned about Hafiz and Did you take care of your responsibility or you neglect them? It is a heavy responsibility. It is a salah, but not facing the direction. That means salah. Carrying the order of Allah in your life. This is something very important, my brothers and sisters. I'm talking you to you from what Allah is saying. From the Prophet وسلم, saying. Now if you have ifs and buts about it, you take it with Allah. But this is the orders. Allah did not say and this is it. No, Allah talk about your wife. Allah talk about your daughter, Allah talk about your son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about the wise man Luqman when he said to his son, Ya Bunayya, aqam al-salah, wa amur bil ma'roof, wa anha anil munkar, wa asbir ala ma'asabak, 
اقم الصلاه وامر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما اصابك ان ذلك من عزم الامور او ماي سون يو سي ايفن ذا بروفيتس بيفور ايفن ذا راتشس بيبل بيفور اس الله بو ذا ريسبونسيبيلتي اوف ذا تشيلدرن هيفي اون ذا شولدر اند ذيس وايز مان هي سي تو هيز سون اقم الصلاه استبلش ذا برير ذيس نمبر 1 and is not only yourself order carry the hour admonish your sister talk to your brother wa'mur bil ma'ruf wanha 'anil munkar stay away from the munkar and forbid it for other people you supposed to be active in the muslim community you supposed to be carrying this da'wah to others not only to yourself and to start with yourself with your wife with your children وأمر بالمعروف وأنهى عن المنكر إن ذلك لمن عزم الأمور. The strong determination and to be from the good quality of life. Life quality is not only having air condition and heater in the house, elevator in the building. This all what we care. I don't know if we are really care to love our children or not. If you care for them. قو انفسكم واهليكم نارا ذا خطبه كان جو فور مور اند مور بات اي كير فور يور تايم بيكوز اي نو ذات يو ونت تو رش تو بي ان تايم باك اور ذو ذات نو بادي اسك يو وات تايم جمعه از اوفر بات يو تشوز تو رش سو ام جوين تو تراي تو بي دون از انتروداكشن تو ذيس سبجكت اف يو ونت تو هير مور اباوت ات Come tomorrow for Salat al-Fajr, insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salli wa usallim ala mab'usi rahmatan lil alameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, all of us loves money. Or care for money. And all of us would like to make profit. Big business. Big income, good income. But I want to tell you one income, you're going to need it. And you're going to need it badly. And it's very important. Your family. The Prophet ﷺ told us, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنَ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطْ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ صَدَقَ جَارِيَةً أَوْ عِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهِ When son of Adam, you Muslim, You Muslim, when you die, all your good deed is sealed. No more income. You could not make salah anymore after you die. You could not fast. But <laughs> there is a way the Prophet is telling you that you can have income. More blessing come to you even after you die. How? A continuous charity. Useful knowledge to teach the people. And what is the third one which all of us can try to do it? A walad in salih in yad'ula or a righteous son that he will make dua for his father after he die. Remember, we're going to die. And we're going to be for need, for income. The only income can come to you there is hasanat. So leave a Muslim son Not only a Muslim doctor. It has to be a Muslim son first and a doctor. A Muslim son first and engineering. A Muslim son and physician. But don't put it backwards. Deenak, deenak, lahmak, walamak, wadamak. Your deen is the most important thing for you. Your child will be happy when you die because he wants to take all this money. He wants to drive this big Mercedes. But if you... Teach and train him about Islam. Now he remember you, and will say, "Rabbi Fili wali walidai, Rabbi Hamuma kama Rabbi Yani Sabi." So make investment in your children. Before time will close, I want to say something about da'wah. It's a different subject, and please listen carefully. And those who taking a nap, please wake up now. The problems that you see me, but I see all of you. 
You only can see one here. I see all of you. Please wake up for dawah. I'm not asking you to go to the free market and give dawah. I want you to act, not only talk dawah. By the will of Allah, and with assistance of some of the Muslims here, that we had to share with the church that we're going to rent the parking lot, the big parking lot there. For those who come late or come early, whatever it is, you have a spot for free. Doesn't matter if you want to put something in the charity box or not, but this is not my concern. My concern, please, I beg of you, I will kiss your head, please. Don't give bad da'wah about Islam and Muslims. No one from the church will hear my khutbah. No one outside the street, in the street can hear my khutbah. But they will see your action. They will see the way how you put your cars. They will see how you throw some trash while you're sitting talking there in the park, in their parking lot. They will go to see like some of you did in Ramadan. I don't know what you call it, tahfir. Zoom in the car, making the car round and making this big noise. Please, this is a bad dawah. It's a bad dawah. Our Muslim brothers, they do it in Ramadan. 11 o'clock after Taraweeh, people sleeping. And they have the muffler, whatever it is that they don't want. Why? Why? Is this a, is a discipline? Please don't think of bad da'wah about Muslims. This will be part of da'wah. When we have the place to park our cars, instead of you getting a ticket, okay? And instead of you, you understand, rush to, to go. But don't think of bad da'wah. Because the church, when they come next day, and we see somebody was eating shawarma and they throw the paper out. Or they see that somebody crossing in front of the other person and could not. And now the battery is not working. So now we leave it for two days there. Our action louder than our words. Please. Allah bless us with somebody to help. People want to make negotiation. Some people they do charity and donation. Everybody doing something. Your contribution is same way. You park in many street. Do it like here in many street. When you see yellow line outside in the mask, that means no parking. And there, do not please, because this is. In Guinness, da'wah, proper da'wah, and it's going to be a negative da'wah. And you're going to say to the church, this is the way how is our Islam. <coughs> Watch for your action, because your action is louder than your words. They do not know too much about us. But this is one of the ways that we communicate with the public. Please, don't give bad image about Islam. And remember, I talked to you about it. I'm not going to repeat it again. Neither we're going to come and take the microphone and go outside. Those who block in the entrance to the church and all this. Don't do this. We have the police came before. People blocking the school for the church, the driveway, all kind of things. Please, for the sake of Allah, be nice. Don't give a bad image about the Muslims. For Allah's sake, I beg Allah's forgiveness for me and you and all the Muslims. Looking forward to see you 5.30 in the morning, like a young youth coming to the mosque to make Fajr in Jama'ah so they can be recorded with the angels and you can have the reward of as if you make Qiyam al half night. Allah give you Saturday and Sunday off, show appreciation by coming at least once a week for Salat al-Fatih. I call you my testimony, and I'll stop for Allah, and I'll give you my testimony.